Everyone knows about MCPs by now, but here's what nobody is talking about. 90% of people who know about it still aren't using it or aren't using it effectively. You've probably seen the demos, heard it's the future of AI agents, or even tried to set up one for yourself. But then you hit a wall of, okay, how do I actually use this in my day-to-day -day workflow? After helping dozens of people actually implement MCPs, I've seen the same pattern over and over again. People get stuck between knowing that it exists and actually deriving value from it. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through when it makes sense to use MCPs for your specific use case and three different ways you can think about implementing them. By the end of the video, you'll have clarity on what MCP is, how to use it, and I'll even show you a sneak peek of building your own. Let's get into it. So just to level set so that everyone watching this knows exactly what an MCP server is, you can think of it as the equivalent of a USB-C wire. Before we had different wires for different devices and different generations within those devices. But MCP aims to unify all the backends of the different services that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. Another way to imagine MCP servers is imagine that AI only had the ability to send a chat in a chatbot. But now the AI has eyes. It can physically see different files, it can chat, it can do all kinds of things. And one of my favorite analogies to explain MCP is the world without MCP looks like this, where you had different keys for different doors. And every single time you want to make a call to a service, you'd have to find the key in your pile and then go to that door, open it, ask for permission, give a password, then you can walk in. But on the right side, the world of MCP, the goal is to have one golden key that not only opens all of the doors, but opens them and you can go in and out as you please, as long as you give the password the first time. Now from an engineering standpoint, MCP servers aren't rocket science and they're not magic. They're basically wrappers on top of existing functions and very elegant ways of calling different services within one tool. And one of the best things about MCP servers is that they can reduce what's called vendor lock-in, where maybe you've over-invested in an AI platform and all your IP, all your prompts, all your knowledge bases live in one area. So if you want that same functionality, you're kind of stuck. By using and building your own MCP servers, you can replicate a lot of that functionality so you own more of your stack. And more importantly, from a security standpoint, MCP servers aren't known for being very secure on the third party side, but if you build your own, you can make it secure. And in terms of categorizing MCPs in different tiers, this is the way that I like to think about them. So first you have the easy to implement, usually one click with authentication, hosted browser MCPs. And I'll show you what they look like just in case in ChatGPT and Claude, but the whole point is that they run in the cloud or in the browser, there's minimal to no secrets outside of maybe an API key of sorts, and then there's no local file system access. So the MCP servers can interact with whatever's in the browser in that specific provider. Now the next tier is a very popular one where you can run these MCP servers on your local hardware. And recently it actually became a lot easier to do that, which I will show you shortly. But the goal of this is that you have more trust more security, it's not necessarily foolproof still, you'll have to do due diligence to make sure it is indeed secure, and more importantly, that the MCP server you're using to begin with is secure. But with this option, you can physically interact with the files on your computer, as well as the general software. And the last one is more enterprise and larger business scale, where you can implement and build your own MCP servers, or host existing servers, but within your team's infrastructure. So think of the large cloud providers, like Microsoft's Azure, Amazon's AWS, Google's GCP, you can actually host these things. So like I said before, you can host these things because they're basically glorified wrappers on top of existing functions that you or AI or both of you built together. All right, so if we pop into ChatGPT, I'm personally on the Teams plan here, but if you click on this plus button right here and you click on use connectors and then you click on this little drop down, you'll see out of the box it comes out with Gmail, Google Drive, Calendar, and other integrations as well. And these are basically MCP servers on the browser side, where once you authenticate your service, you can use whatever tools they have configured behind the scenes. Not only that, but you can actually add your own MCP servers for existing services that support it. So for example, Fireflies here interacts with my meeting note taker app, so it can go and derive all of the different transcripts, and I can use it in my chat to ask questions like, what were the biggest objection handle for any of the prompt advisor agency clients we had this week? And then on the teams and enterprise plans, you can use what's called connect more where you can browse other connectors from HubSpot, Notion, etc., 
or you can actually create your own. So how it works is you'd come up with a name for the connector, then a description, then a URL to the server. But obviously the prerequisite here is that you build the MCP server, which will take a little bit of technical know-how. On the cloud side, it looks very familiar, where if you click on this section and you click on search and tools, you'll see you have the exact same starter MCP servers. And then if you go to add or manage connectors, so if we go to add, once again, you have a mini app store pretty large one and they keep adding to it. So if you remember what I said about local installations, all of these can interact with things like your file system, your note taking apps, your iMessage if you're on a Mac, anything here can interact with the physical information on your laptop. And once again, if you go to add custom connector, then you'll have the exact same thing where in this case, if you go to advanced settings, you have the name, you have what's called the remote MCP server. Again, this means that it has to be stored somewhere in the cloud so that this can easily access it. Now, if we transition from browser based to level two local based, this is still a browser tool, right? It's still Claude, but it's Claude desktop, meaning it does have more access to things like my Docker instance and Docker essentially lets you run different services in a containerized format. So it's more secure and you have more control over what it can or can't do. So you'll see here, when I go on functions, I'm going to have a few different types of functions. So these two tools here, forecasting calculator and lazy calculator are tools that I physically built myself and I'm hosting locally on my Mac. And just to give you a little demo, Lazy Calculator is a very dumb app that basically does math, but doubles the result. So if I say four plus six, and it's actually 10, it will make it 20. So if I say something like, can you add six plus 10, but use the Lazy Calculator tool? And I send that over. It should realize that because I said the name, it should pop it up. It'll ask me for permission to use the tool, but I built this myself on my computer just using the eye. So it's gonna come up with the lazy calculation. I think I've already pre-authenticated it before. So you can see here, it's now taken the equation. It said it's 32 and I can walk through the thought process. So what's six plus 10? It's 16, but it multiplied it by two. So it's 32. And you can see here, it's a little bit playful where it says wink at the very bottom. But essentially this is just to show you that it is possible to build and own your own MCP. If I wanted to use this function over here, I would have to find a way to build it in a way that it can be accessed on a cloud server. So then I could make a remote connection to it on the browser. Now, like I said at the beginning, there's even an easier way to use MCP servers locally now, which comes from Docker desktop, which are not a sponsor of this video. I'm just showing you this feature where they have a catalog of tons of MCP servers that allow you to do one click authentication. So for something like GitHub, for example, I clicked on it. I authenticated with my token. And then once I did a one click, I can go to clients. You can see right here, they allow you to do a one click to things like Claude Desktop, Cursor, Gemini CLI, LM Studio, which is basically a local language model repo where you can download open source models. And you'll see here, once I've connected them, if we go back to Claude Desktop and we click on search and tools, we have this section that's called MCP Docker, where every single tool that's associated with both GitHub as well as DuckDuckGo, the web search browser, I'll have access to right here. And you can basically turn on or turn off any of these toggles. So if you don't want to overwhelm the AI with too many pieces of information or too many tools, you can tell it, here's five tools of the hundred, focus on those only. And the best part about running something like this on your computer is this is free to use and it's free to host as long as the associated service you're trying to use is also free, then you're good to go. And it's literally as easy as me saying something like YouTube transcripts and then clicking on this plus button, then clicking add server. And now I'll have access to these two tools right here. If I click on this link, it'll say you can get a transcript and get video info. And this then again, transcends to all kinds of tools because I don't just have to use it in cloud desktop. I can use it in cursor. So if I'm building something, that needs a transcript to help me build it, I can go use that MCP server, bring it into cursor with like one click and then use it from there. And if we go back into Claude, you'll see right now, if I go to MCP Docker and click on here, I should be able to search for transcript. And you can see right there, I now have access to the YouTube get transcript function. Just a few months ago, this would take a few extra steps, me showing you a JSON file, you doing it on your end saying, Mark, this doesn't work. And then I would have to say, no, it works on my end. Why does it not work on your end? And then we go in this endless loop, but now you can skip that pain and just get to the result. And last but not least, like I said, at the start, I would show you a teaser of what it looks like to build your own server. 
So essentially this is Claude code that I'm using in cursor because I like to use both side by side. And I ask it with a series of files here to create this special function, which is not the lazy calculator. In this case, it is a function to help me with forecasting. So you can see here it's called the forecasting calculator MCP. And if we go back into Claude, the way it works is the following. If I send over a request to forecasting. Okay, so I had sales over the last five months of $6, $9, $12, $15, $18, and $20. Can we use the forecasting calculator to help me forecast the next five months of sales based on this? So it will send it over, and the beauty of it is behind the scenes, it's very deterministic. There's no AI or language models happening in my function. But because I'm combining that function with something here using a language model, it can interpret the back and forth, invoke the function, interpret the results for me, and I can see the whole thought process. So if we take a peek here at the forecast data, you can see my original request. It comes up with a response right here from the actual function, forecasted values. Then Claude takes that and interprets it and says the linear regression forecast shows that sales are projected to continue growing at a $2.86 per month rate. And then it goes through some other stats and comes up with a full forecast. Now, initially this took me a few hours to figure out, but the beauty of this is once you build one and it works, you can use that same code that AI can help you generate to build another one, to build four. So for example, the lazy calculator took me an hour and a half to make it work but this more advanced and actually useful forecasting calculator took me four or five minutes and three requests. And you can go one step further. Imagine building this, but then using language models behind the scenes to act as your super tools that you can use anywhere. And because this is the USB-C type of technology, if you hosted it on an, a cloud server, then you can really access it from your ChatGPT, your Claude, and different services can benefit from one single tool. So hopefully that makes sense. I wanted to walk through conceptually the three different tiers I see around MCPs, just so you can get more familiar and recognize them in the field. And hopefully it gets you excited to actually interact and use them for your day to day. If that was a helpful quick overview, let me know down in the comments below. And if you wanna see things like this, where I build MCP servers and show you exactly how to do it, then check out the first link in the description below for my early AI adopters community. I'll see you in the next one.